the antarctic can be one of the most hostile places on earth even in midsummer it's an unusual destination for a holiday but thousands of tourists do come here every year The Antarctic can also be one of the most beautiful and tranquil places in the world. Visitors come to see the scenery and the wildlife. They're prepared to put up with the cold for the sake of the experience. The cruise ship is crewed by experts in ice navigation and Antarctic wildlife. Inflatable landing craft take the passengers ashore for a brief encounter of life in an unfamiliar world. These tourists are heading for Adelaide Island, which lies just inside the Antarctic Circle. Here, the vast south polar ice cap holds the continent and the encircling seas in an iron grip for most of the year. Without modern technology, people could not stay in this freezing wilderness for long. which live here are used to freezing conditions. Gen 2 penguins are adapted to withstand the worst Antarctic weather. The snowstorm doesn't deter the tourists, it adds to their experience of the Antarctic. Gentoos breed here in what passes for summer in the Antarctic. They spend the winter months in the coastal waters where food is plentiful. Sometimes the snow gets too deep for walking, but that presents no problem to a penguin. Keith Shackleton, a renowned artist, is drawn by this frozen continent's stark beauty and its remarkable wildlife. <laughs> Penguins have no enemies on land, so they're completely unafraid of people. This makes them excellent subjects for artists and photographers. <laughs> Amongst the tourist attractions in this polar region are blue-eyed shags. And on a cliff nearby, there are some Cape pigeons. Cape Pigeon is the sailor's name for the Cape Petrel. It's a tube nose, one of a group of truly oceanic wanderers which range the high seas feeding on plankton. Another better known tube nose is the albatross. This is a black-browed albatross which nests further to the north in the Falkland Islands. 
these isles are the tourists first port of call the albatross feeds its enormous chicks on pre-digested plankton The chicks are fed by both parents and take a year to reach their full size. Because of this extended parental responsibility, the largest albatrosses can only breed once every two years. As the ship makes its way south, the tourists are likely to see the great wandering albatross. It has a wingspan of between three and four meters. The albatross uses every swirl and eddy of the air close to the sea surface to produce the power of its long glides. Conserving energy in this way, it's capable of incredible journeys. One that was ringed here was seen again 10,000 kilometers away. These huge birds settle on the water to feed, mostly on squid from near the surface. Another surface feeder is Wilson's petrel. Petrels feed on plankton, which they pick from the surface. Petrels, like albatrosses, make use of the air currents just above the surface. Penguins stay close to the surface too, but on the other side. They're marvellously adapted to life at sea and can fly with remarkable speed underwater. Coming ashore on a rough day is not quite so easy though. to the risks of the surf, penguins have a specially strengthened rib cage. They can bounce off rocks without injury. These chinstrap penguins are landing on the black lava coast of Deception Island. Once they get ashore, the chinstraps climb up the slopes of the island and occasionally active volcano to breed in an enormous rookery. Over a million of them come here every year. Chinstrap penguins are one of the few bird species that are increasing in number. They're actually expanding their range from Deception and the South Orkneys to other islands round the Antarctic Circle.
the extraordinary mating call of the males has a triumphant sound about it scientists call it the ecstatic display As the cruise ship presses southward down the Antarctic Peninsula, it enters the realm of crab-eater seals. Like most of the Antarctic's wildlife, they show little fear of ships or people. There are leopard seals here too. Leopard seals are well named, not because they're spotted, but because they're swift hunters. One of the sights that visitors all hope to see is a group of porpoising penguins. Porpoising gives the penguins a chance to breathe without slowing down, and at the same time, it saves them energy. Their top speed underwater is about 25 kilometers an hour. Ice flows make good platforms to rest on, and here the penguins are out of the reach of marine predators. On the Falkland Islands, a party of Gen 2 penguins are heading for the beach to escape from danger. Some other penguins already ashore look rather timid about going back to sea, which they have to do from time to time to drink. At the water's edge, a couple of great skewers are clearing away a corpse, the remains of a Gen 2 penguin. Sea lions eat penguins when they can catch them, and here at New Ireland in the Falklands, the penguins know it.
the birds rely on safety in numbers moving as a crowd they hope to confuse the enemy Sea lions watch for the occasional bird which strikes out alone. Further out among the ice flows around the Argentine islands, the tourists get the chance of seeing crab eater and Weddell seals. Crab eater seals are normally creatures of the pack ice where they exist in vast numbers. Weddell seals and crab eaters are quite common, but it's not so often that one gets a really close view of a leopard seal. There are always a few around near the American Palmer base watching their daily penguin colony. The daily chicks grow fat on krill brought to them by their parents. The youngsters are always hungry. As they get older and more mobile, they pursue their parents incessantly clamouring for food. While they wait for their parents' return, the chicks exercise their wings. Although they will never become airborne, they need strong forelimbs to power them through the water. After the bustle and excitement of the breeding season, Activity in the Adelie colony dies down in February and March with the approach of the long southern winter. The chicks have now moulted into adult plumage and it's time for them to go to sea. They may have some distance to walk. The colony stretches about two kilometres from the shore. Like their parents, the chicks stick together for safety. At the water's edge, they hesitate. The sea's a strange world to them. It will take a while to master this new element, and the leopard seals know it. The young penguins are probably unaware of the danger. Even if they are, they must eventually swim out into the deeper water to find food.
The leopard seals take a few birds, but most of the youngsters will make it onto the open ocean. Snow and ice advancing northward mark the return of winter. Only stragglers remain in the penguin colonies, but they still thrill the last of the season's tourists. Adelie penguins are one of the most successful species in the Antarctic. Not all of the wildlife in the far south has done so well there's a memorial nearby to a group of animals that was less successful. The disaster that overtook the whales in the Antarctic is another story. Here, at Port Lockroy, the whalers used to drag the carcasses onto the beach and butcher them. Piles of whale bones lie strewn about, a silent indictment of the short-sightedness of mankind. tourists, it's time to leave. The weather now begins to deteriorate. Sub-zero temperatures and ferocious gales are not only unpleasant, they're also dangerous. Passengers return to their ship. The dinghies come aboard for the last time this season. The elements have in the past kept humans from invading the Antarctic, but the technology to conquer and exploit its resources has now been developed we now have the power to destroy the pristine beauty of this white wilderness. Its future is in our hands. Many argue that if we do, we will have lost mankind's last chance to leave something beautiful unspoiled. From one geographical extreme to the other when we study the water birds of the Arctic tundra in tomorrow night's Pole Stars at the same time here on 5.